Hey, how's it going guys? And welcome to video number three in the base section of this online course, where we're gonna be covering how you can use envelopes, LFOs, and macros to apply modulation inside Serum. Now, we're gonna be sticking with the example of moving the filter cutoff or modulating the filter cutoff, uh, as was explained in the previous video. So let's turn the filter on, and the first modulation source, uh, which is what causes the movement, that we're gonna be explaining is envelope two. Now, in order to apply a modulation source to a modulation destination at the filter cutoff, all you have to do is click and drag it. And there we go, it's that simple. Now, there's one more definition that we need to cover uh, so that you can understand exactly what's going on when we're modulating something, and that is modulation depth. Now, modulation depth allows you to control how much you want the parameter to be modulated or moved, and it's indicated by this blue line that's just popped up around the filter cutoff. Now, in this instance, we want the modulation to only go in one direction. So really quickly, just pop into the matrix and click on this arrow to make sure there's a tip on just one end and then come back into the oscillator section. So with modulation depth, we're essentially saying, OK, filter, I want you to move from here to here. And let's think of that in terms of a percentage. Now the end of the modulation bar that is at this white dash, we're gonna to refer to as 0%. So let's pull the cutoff down a little bit and hover over here and click and drag that down. And we can see this other end of the modulation bar and we're gonna call this 100%. So the one that's at the white dash is 0%. And then the end of the modulation bar that we can move like this is 100%. And that zero to 100% is controlled by the sustain percentage which is down here in envelope two. As you can see, when the sustain value is at 100, the dot is up at the top, whereas as I move it down, the sustain dot moves all the way down to 0% down here, similarly to the volume in the amp envelope that we just explained. So now with the sustain all the way down at zero, this envelope is a visual representation of the movement of that filter cutoff. Now, 100% currently puts the filter in an open position, which is all the way up here, whereas 0% puts the filter in a closed position down here. Now we said in the previous video that we want to move the filter from an open position to a closed position, so this is going well. If we wanna control how quickly that happens, we can do that using the decay time. As I said, this is a visual representation of going from open to closed. So the decay time simply controls how quickly that's gonna happen. So let's have a look at this in action. And move the decay time up. Now what I want you to pay attention to is this blue dot coming from 100% down to 0%. It exactly maps to the blue dot coming down from here to here because it's doing the exact same thing. There we go, I hope that makes sense. Now, if we wanted the filter to go from 0%, which is closed, up to 100%, which is open, and then back down to 0%, which is closed, then we can do this by adding attack time. So let's have a look at that. Now what we're saying is we want to go from 0%, which is here, up to 100%, and then back down to 0%. So let's play a note and watch that happen. As you see again, the blue dot on here exactly maps to what's happening on this envelope. Now we can also use an LFO as a modulation source to cause this movement. So what I'm gonna do is reset all of the modulations by coming to the menu and doing initialize modulations. So let's move that back down to there. This starts normally around there. Now, LFO stands for Low Frequency Oscillator, and an oscillator, put simply, is something that oscillates or moves back and forwards. So you could say that a swing moving backwards and forwards is oscillating. Now we can take that back and forth movement and apply it to a parameter using an LFO. Again, let's stick to 0% being closed and 100% being open. And let's look at LFO number one. 0%, which is closed, is at the bottom here. 
100%, which is open, is up at the top, and then that's going to come back down. And this is going to oscillate and just keep repeating and repeating. So let's apply the LFO to the filter cutoff. And again, you want to make sure that that's only going in one direction by clicking on here and making sure there's only a tip at one end. Uh, but essentially, now we're going to be moving back and forwards between this being 100%, which is open, and this being 0%, which is closed. So let's have a look at that. And again, it's going to follow the blue dot that comes up and down this LFO line. Let's make that happen a bit slower by slowing down the rate, which is how quickly this is oscillating. We can also speed that up. And it's currently locked into the tempo of the track, but if we hit BPM, that unlocks it from the tempo of the song. So it's just going in terms of frequency now. Um, and it's a much smoother transition between uh, those different values. And finally, we have macros, which are slightly different. Now, what these allow you to do is move a parameter in a controlled way between two different values. So. What I'm going to do is set up a really simple bass patch here. I'm going to turn the filter on again. Uh, I'm going to set the cutoff to the closed position here. And I'm going to get this envelope to just bring it down over the course of 700 milliseconds. So let's apply that there. Say that's where I want it to pull it from. And I want to pull it to there. And let's play that. Maybe that can happen a bit quicker, actually. There we go. So now what I'm going to use a macro to do is move the cutoff. Um, so let me just click off of envelope two so this blue line disappears for a second. Let's say during the build up, I want the cutoff to move. Um, so let's play the bass pattern I've used in the song. <laughs> There we go. So I'm going to play that bass pattern and I'm going to move this dial according to what I want the filter cut off to do during the breakdown. And you'll hear that effect. There we go. So I want the filter cut off to move from here where it was up to here, because I think that sounds good. It puts a little bit more high frequency uh, into the sound. Um, and I want I want to be able to do that movement nice and quickly. Now, if I had to come back in and move that every time, number one, it's probably going to end up on a different value every time, which isn't what we want. Um, and it's also fiddly to do. It's fiddly to automate that filter cutoff frequency to do that every time. There's a much easier way to do it. So the way that we do that is using a macro. These are the four macros that we have in Serum. And in order to apply them to a parameter, we click and drag it onto the cutoff. Now, the modulation depth in this instance, we want to tell it where to start and where to end. So I think I moved it up to about here and you can tweak this to make it sound exactly how you want. Uh, but essentially what, what we have now is we have this dial here, which is the macro dial. Sorry, my, my serum bugs out. And if I, if I pull up a number box, it stays there until I close and reopen serum, um, which I'm not going to do right now. But, um, if I move this macro from here to here, that full rotation takes that parameter, takes that white dot from there to the end of the blue line. So let's have a listen to that. Moving that up. Now it doesn't do it visually with this white dash, but it's definitely doing it um, in terms of the sound that's coming out. Let's move that back down. That is the exact same as me doing this. Except it's much more controlled, it's between two set values, 
And then later on, I'm going to show you how you can control these much easier than clicking and dragging these inside of Serum. So in the next video, we're going to be breaking down the actual patch that I used in this song.